All right, people can see your face. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Uh, can everybody hear us? Say something, Boren. I can hear you. All right, great. If you can hear anything, you guys can tell us on the chat log. All right, so we are live today. We're going to be doing some paint overs and critiques, and then we're also going to be announcing the beginning of our weekly assignments and monthly challenges. All right, uh, someone in the chat says, hearing you fine. Mm. Yeah. And Colton, don't forget to switch camera every now and then because... Oh, yeah, I'll let you see me. Yeah, I, I think I might end up being the mascot of the... <laughs> you are the mascot, <laughs> dude. Ba uh, Rage Burin. Jesus, okay. Uh, so, uh, Colton, from who do you want to start with? What the... Uh, I don't really care. Do you want me to... Do you want me to start, or do you want to start? I'm I'm fine with whatever. Um, you want to start from Austin Hall? Yeah, because we both got stuff to say on on him. Okay, uh, I guess I'll start first. I got, I don't have too much, but just some couple of things. So Austin Hall made this really awesome. Uh, he was actually on our video last two weeks ago, right? He was. Uh, we 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 reviewed his uh, portfolio, right? Yes. So, uh, yeah. So this time he came back with more uh, interesting uh, designs, and uh, he definitely improved on his material studies. Um, so uh, he he drew this robot which uses uh, drums to make awesome sound, and it's a really flexible running parkour type robot. Um, yeah, so a uh, few things I want to mention is that when I look at these uh, round cylindrical flat pieces on the robot, to me, I don't exactly register it as a drum immediately. So I thought, you know, making it uh, really obvious would help. And um, if you see down here, uh, this is what we know as a drum, right? Like drum is this cylindrical shape with two sticks or one stick on them that when it beats it makes the sound uh, here's uh, just one robotic example I found on the uh, Google images but you get the idea but if you want to make a portable drum yeah you can kind of do it like this but no matter how it is we can still see these beating sticks right now what do you call them Colton drumsticks yeah drumsticks right yeah so that's why I thought it would be very uh, Important to add this, uh, you can see on these little white shapes, that's like drumsticks, see? So I, I hope now you can kind of know that, oh, well, these sticks probably beat the drum, right? So that's how I saw it. And also he said it does a lot of parkour. Now, well, parkour's jump and flip and all that. This robot can do, but, but my question was like, can this robot cling onto walls and then pull itself up? So in order to do that, uh, it needs to have very strong and also very flex flexible limbs, right? So I tried adding this uh, rubber, like sticky hands, so it can hold on to most ledges and edge of the buildings and such. And also if I remove my sketch, you can see like these flimsy fingers will not hold onto anything and it will smash easily if it lands on its hands and stuff. So I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say here. And same thing, uh, if, if, if we like to think that this parkour robot will land on its tiptoe or uh, cling onto walls like this, it definitely needs to have very flexible toes. So that's why I added this um, rubber-like uh, sneaker, right? Those uh, running shoes type design on the legs. So yeah, that, that's all I have to say. Uh, Colton, you can take over. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, I think you had some pretty good, pretty good things to say. Let's see. I'm just collecting my. Uh... All right, I can switch to my screen real quick. Let's see. 
So I haven't really started much of a paint over yet, but I can go into what I what I thought a little bit about the uh, about the design. Um, I think overall, as far as like thinking about the the mechanical design, like, and this is on top of all of what Buren said. I think that. Um, what he said about the drums and everything definitely, um, definitely very important to to keep in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and look up a drum head. So, I think one thing that's pretty iconic about about drums and identifying them is a oh, Colton. Have you? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought... Um. Drum, drums have a pretty specific look to the to the heads of them. They have uh, a pretty specific way that they're connected. I know these are supposed to be like future robot drums, but in order to help people maybe identify what they are, they there's some pretty specific stuff. Because um, my brother actually played the drums for a for a very long time, and when I was young, I, I learned a little bit, uh, not much though. But I know that just observing drums and putting them together and stuff, you know they they kind of have this so they have this head and it's like a it's a thin sheet that is that is stretched across the the surface not the surface uh and it's hollow inside like this and then it, they have these um these parts that are basically bolted down all all around that are like this so they go like that and then this sheet is is stretched across like this and they have this uh, sort of ring, this sort of ring, so kind of like this. And then you you obviously you hit on this part, and it makes a, a noise. And there's this little hole, hole right here that lets air escape. Um, there's a film on the back, and there's a film on the front. And and with the snare drum, the reason it has that raspy sound is if if you want to make like a snare drum or a different thing, because there's toms which are like the boom, boom, boom ones. And then there's a snare drum, which is that raspy sounding one. And the reason it sounds raspy is because it has a little sheet of, of like these, these kind of wire on the back right here. And these actually vibrate when you hit the drum. It, it vibrates and it gives it that raspy sound. So this is the bottom of the drum and it usually will have like a clear plastic this is thinner and then the top of the drum has this really strong plastic part that you or leather i don't know exactly what it's made out of that that makes the sound so i i don't think that these are really reading as drums right now i think they're more reading as speakers i would probably say so maybe in order to make them feel a little bit more more like drums you could go in and Maybe I, I also think that uh, drums quite often will have a logo of the drum manufacturer on them. Now, if, if you want this to be really fun and lighthearted and all that, uh, maybe you could have like this around it. Uh, if you want it to be kind of lighthearted, maybe instead of the logo, you could have something like maybe the name of the robot or something like maybe his his name's like i don't know what what's a funny name burin like uh, a like a robot name that has to do with drums like blam or i don't know uh drumatron drumatron or, uh, Let, let's or, just call uh, him let's just call him drum chan or drum. drummy drum or. drum chan okay See, you can you can have like this and then just like skew this in maybe like that. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look at reference to, to look how they they set it up usually. Let's see. Uh, see, here's the logo right here. They they probably always have that on it. And the same with like symbols and all that other stuff on. Um... So... Yeah, someone in the chat just mentioned gaining knowledge about how drums work isn't what I expected, but I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm, when you're when you're working as a concept artist, this is all the stuff. Like, this is your job. It's your job to figure this kind of stuff out. Yeah, like, you, you need to do artist, research. You need to know about everything. 
Yeah. It, well, and you, or if you don't know about it, you need to learn how to learn about it because you're doing. This is your job is to think and design and come up with stuff. It's not just your job to come up with cool shapes. It's also your job to come up with, you know, like, um, it, it's also your job to, to figure out how things work, you know? Hold on. I'll, maybe we'll do, you know, something cool like, I don't know. You know, designing designing a logo or something. Who knows? See, like we want to start having these starting to read as as actual like drums. So yeah, like it, it, the, the 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 most important thing about concept art is that when someone see what it is, they must immediately pick it up in one yep. second. Exactly. And if, if 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 someone doesn't do that, and you have to go and explain, that means you didn't do good enough work. Right? Yeah. That's exactly how it is. That's why when we watch all these Disney movies or all these movies, we know exactly you know oh who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, who's the clumsy one, you know? Yeah. Like no nobody came and told us, right? We just know it before they even open their mouth half of the time. So Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there, there is a universal set of things and you can't break it. Mm-hmm. And mm. that could even go into like the texture of like this drum, you know, like like where yeah, it can't be like mirror, right? <laughs> no, like if if something yeah. if something's always hitting this drum right around here, then it's gonna get worn smooth. So you can also have like this sort of, you know, area where it's where it feels a little bit like worn down or smoother or whatever. And and I might just go so far as to um, just take an, an actual picture of a drum head and stick it on, you know, stick it on this uh right here like let's see if i can find anything and then uh, uh you can put like a uh, movie reference like if you've seen whiplash yeah you could say not my tempo or something like that yeah I just yeah yeah so uh going on to what what burin what burin was saying um drum part i just want to look up uh what is it like there's drum sets have have a very specific look to how to to the parts that are used to to build them like they're really highly metallic chrome a lot of the time they have these specific knobs and dials to to tighten things um i'm just looking for some parts see look here's a here's a stand for a symbol and you know they'll they'll have these very specific parts on them and what i want to do is is like what burin said you i actually think that it would be better to have like a, a a drumstick placed so i would i would actually use the reference that i find um you know online and then i might want to go in and really design this out because here's the thing right like you need your hands to beat the drum but this robot's gonna drum while he's running so he's going to use both his hands and feet to make his run, right? Yeah. So exactly. that's why having every drum to have that automatic beating hands would be like perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So you can beat the drums as he runs. Yeah, exactly. And then going in and using reference to figure out, because you're going to need to build basically this thing that holds a drumstick. But if you want it to look like it's a drum then you have to use reference from a drum set and in order to do that you need to look up you need to look up exactly what that looks like and just start like just go on google and be like what do these look like um i can bring this page over that i'm looking at right now you know like what do these look like see like very specific shape language to all this stuff you know oh and and also with like a these these stands they they have these little like discs that are fat made of fabric that cushion they, these gray discs that like when you when you have a symbol for example they have these little uh cushions right here i wonder if i can yeah right there and that actually will hold it in place so different stuff like that that you wouldn't even come up with unless you looked specifically online and that all adds to the believability of your design 
you know, and then then you look up what a drumstick looks like, and a, and a drumstick, I guess, kind of looks, it has like a little, you know, knob on the end, and then it's, it kind of gets like that, you know, but, um, and then this, and they're, they're made out of wood or plastic, they can be, you know, they can be black, they can be tan, they can be whatever color, basically any color, but I would probably go in and just be like, you know, and, and you look up where people hold drumsticks. Um, how to hold a drum stick. You know, where where are the people holding it at? It looks like, um, it looks like, you know, people are holding it kind of near the end. So then you're like, all right, so maybe you'll go in here and right about there, I would say, probably. You know, like, uh. You know, and this is, is this is all the kind of reference that you use. What's that? What is the metallic part with the, uh, of the drum that goes pss, pss, when you hit it? That's a symbol. Okay, you can put it somewhere. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that'd be actually awesome. You know, you could just look up. Uh... I do not know how to spell this. It's called. It's it's pronounced Zildjian. Sim. I uh, no, C Y M B A L. I don't know why I spelled it the other way. Zildjian. It's a it's a brand of of symbol that's really cool and they have an awesome logo and everything, but um, yeah that one yeah they're super cool looking. Uh, they have all they have all different kinds of symbols. You know, it's like an entire industry. Music is you know there's drum sets that cost thousands and thousands of dollars and have just all these different parts and everything. And this isn't Zildjian, I don't think, but there's um there's all kinds of um. Yeah, this is the this is a symbol. So they have like different textures and bumps on them that makes different sounds, you know. And I would definitely take something, you know, like this and just like what if you what if you added this and you could start playing with your silhouette by adding stuff what like if you this. Do you it know? like a hat. Yeah, <laughs> there there could be that too. You know, you could put a hat on him and do this. Maybe he could like you know. Um there there's all different things to this but this is kind of part of the research that you do when you're making something like this you don't have to use all of these um parts yeah exactly ursula says and also what would power the automatic drumsticks maybe add space for power packs or interesting shapes or hidden cables yeah all kinds of stuff you know and as you put this stuff in your design your shape language a lot of the time will emerge, you know. Um, yeah, I remember my brother used to put blankets inside of his. Um, what's what's the big drum that's on the floor? I forget, but uh, because it, it muffles the sound, it makes it sound better. It's called the um, the bass drum. So there, there's all these different things that you can. Um, that you can do. I'm just looking up a, an image really quick. Uh, let's see if this will drag over. Nope. So yeah, reference reference usage is very important. I would say you know um, here's a drum set. So you have all these different drums. You know you have your your hi hat, which is like two little cymbals together. You have your your I think this is called a bass drum. You have a snare drum. You know you have the chair, and you can see that all these. Here's the toms, two toms and a in a big one. And then like there's like a crash symbol and a splash symbol which is really small and you have your um there's like a really big symbol that you use to go like ting 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 like there's all these different sounds that you can make. And just doing research and maybe watching some YouTube videos on it and just learning about how how that kind of stuff works is is so important to your design. And just making it, um, making it believable, you know. You know, like, and then just putting that around. But I, I think this looks a lot more like a drum now, and like in my opinion, I might. What about the face? The I face? Would yeah, I would. About the face of the bot. Yeah, I mean, I think there are there are some issues about the uh, 
about the face. I think you discussed that a little bit, didn't you? Mm. Well, for me, I just wanted to make it like, I don't understand that cross shape on it. If it was just a black glass, that would be cool. But, you know, I don't know what uh, Austin was trying to do with. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm but not... I didn't focus on the face. I, I, I focused more on the uh, cooler parts like those drums and the uh, parkour joints and fingers and stuff. So. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly um, about the face. I'd probably redesign it, um, you know, go in and if it's if it's supposed to be like highly reflective black, you know, you might you might want to. I don't know, just maybe figure something out. I really don't know. Um, I, w I would redesign it. I also wanted to touch on some of the uh, design issues that I see throughout the whole the whole robot, and I think it's a it's a an issue with um, your detail. I think there needs to be more areas of rest. I think every surface is filled to the brim with stuff. And I think maybe if you if you add a little bit more areas of rest, it might like get rid of some of the cut lines. Maybe put a little bit more thought into how how your cut lines work, how this thing uh, might be assembled. I'm I'm really glad that you're actually starting to think about your materials more. Um, it's getting there. I would say it still looks a little bit matte in some areas, but like. Like this place right here, I think looks looks pretty cool. You know. No, it's it's like uh, you know those flat faces don't look flat because you have uneven highlights over them. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot That's of. That's why it uh, looks weird. It's like, like this. is that a dent or is that a bump? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It needs to be like that, right? Yeah, a lot of these. Um, like I'm not sure if this is. If this is like uh, if this is like this. Because that's how it's rendered. But then these lines right here tell me that it's actually a flat. You know, yeah. they t it tells me it's a flat plane. So I think that just... I, I'm going to trust the lines more than I'm going to trust the rendering right now. So if this is supposed to be round, which I don't actually think it is. Because usually people's line work is what they were intending to do. Like, I know this is round right here. You know, this kind of area because that's what your line work tells me you know and if this is really reflective you're going to be picking up you know colors from the floor this is going to be getting a little bit more gray and then you're going to have some pretty pretty dark spots where like ambient occlusion and stuff is the only thing that's that's coming out i, I definitely know that this right here is uh is round and i know that this is going to pick up you know stuff from the floor so it really just depends on what exactly you want to show. Like, I, I know that this is supposed to be more, maybe maybe more of a leather. And I think you did a pretty good job starting your render on, on this. I'm going to flip this really quick. But, uh, like, yeah, I, th I think you could tell pretty easily right now that this is supposed to be a drum just because the the um thought that's put into it now and i think if you changed a bunch of these to drums you know and you can have different size drums so it makes different noises and just really really look into that kind of thing so oh come on computer um here's a bit of a little thing right here that i'm Let me think how I'd... I might do something like that. Um, there. Yeah, I probably have the have the symbol placed placed all around. Drum Chan. Stupid. I had that name. I think it's I think funny though. Drum coon. Yeah, drum coon. <laughs> you know, and anyways, I, and and then like maybe in the game you could have like different 
different power-ups or something. Like, maybe one would change the sound of the drum and it would be, like, I don't know. Like, in instead of, like, um, drums, maybe it'd sound like dogs barking or cats meowing or something. Like, different, like, or you can get into a speed, you can get, like, a speed boost and it would, like, speed up the just different things like it wouldn't only pertain to his speed or his jump height but it would also affect the sound of the drums and stuff like that and you could show that in some way i guess like maybe not without like animating it and all but that'd be something that uh you would you would pitch basically if you're like if you have that idea and you're you're telling your like art director or whatever about it you're like oh yeah and the this will change the uh the sound of the drums and it'll make it sound like this and then he gets a speed boost or a jump boost and it does that and yada 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 you can uh i had some dumb idea the uh he can also try like um like a made out of wood voodoo type cursed you know like a tree root root type drum yeah and then he can totally go for the 1960s jazz style or like retro style robot but with yeah you know, okay. there are a lot of different eras to uh, look up from. Yeah, I have a couple more things to say on this. So I think I think one thing that ah, oh, what is wrong with my computer right now? It keeps making a noise. There. Um, I think one thing is maybe simplifying a lot of these forms. Maybe, like you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing right here, but I think the idea is that maybe a lot of these forms are a little bit too complicated right now and there's not a lot of areas that the shape of this whole thing can just be expressed in a simple in a simple way um i think a lot of your cut lines are really complicated and they can be just kind of dumbed down um let me think about this. So like, I think like maybe some of these shapes in, in here that the, the red is doing is maybe a little bit random. You, you almost can make up rules, you know, like maybe everywhere that there's a, a metal part like this, it's, it's surrounded by like red. So you can have like a little red patch right here, you know, or maybe it's surrounded by But like red like that you know so every time there's an arm or a leg you know you can be like it's going to be surrounded by red oops like that you know or every time there's a maybe you could have this around all of those maybe you could have this like it, it seems like for the most part that's kind of what's going on like you got these red but and maybe just a little bit more cohesiveness to to where your color placement is exactly. Um, I kind of like the idea of these. Maybe that's the name of the plot. Yeah, I, I kind of like that idea. Maybe instead of on the arms right there, I might put them on the arm like on the outside, like right around there just so people can see it better when he's running by, you're not really gonna see the top of the arms as much. You're probably gonna see like the outside of the arms. Uh, yeah, here's some more drums. And I think I'm about done with this paint over for the most part or else I'm just gonna start noodling on it for a while. But maybe just a little bit. you know like that and I, I think that could be a pretty cool I think I, I do like this idea a lot it's fun you know I haven't really seen it done before like this I've seen drum bots before but not like a parkour drum bot it's fun and I think that's about it. I'm not really going to touch on the, uh, the, the, like the gesture of it or any of that. I would just say maybe as a couple final words, keep pushing on your materials. And I think the key to materials is understanding your lighting. 
and what's happening exactly. Materials are, are not very easy because you need to understand like exactly where your lights are and everything. I'm not sure exactly where it is in this scene. It's some, it's, it's above in a way. But just working on that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. You got anything boring? What else? What other notes do I have? Hard surface design, proportion, shapes. Yeah. I think that's about it for this one. <clears throat> Yeah. Right. Uh, who's next for you? Who's next for me? Let's see. Mm. I got. I got this one. Let's see. Yeah, I can. I can do a. Oh, I got this one too. I don't think there's. Yeah. Yeah, I can start on my next one if you want. Yeah, go ahead, man. All right. Okay, um, this is by Bradley, and this is actually kind of fun. This is um, one of the only one of the only hard surface designs we got. Everything else was pretty much a character or related to a character, which I like. Which means that there's there's less competition out there for for getting a job, and you can kind of sneak your way in that way if you want it. Um, I, I made a couple notes for this one. I would say that your that number one, as far as your your fundamentals of, of drawing goes, I'd say your line work. I'm I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a painting or a line work. First off, assuming that this is supposed to be a line work with like a color wash underneath, I would say your line work is a is a little bit messy as far as your as far as your line weight goes. Like you you have these um. You have these areas like, did I, yeah, yeah, these areas right here, like right here. I don't think this should be a super heavy line weight, but it is. I think that your your heavier line weight should be around the outside edges, and you you have some some okay line weights in some areas. I like that you're I like that you're really thinking about how this how this works that's very important uh your perspective is not that bad oops yeah your perspective is not too bad for this um i think that Let's just hold on. I'll do a little bit more of this. Uh, I think the spikes on the wheels might be a little bit crazy, like <clears throat> a little bit overdone. <clears throat> maybe, maybe I would change the wheel design or incorporate that elsewhere. Let's see your your planks and boards and assembly of stuff is a little bit. I'm kind of just collecting my thoughts right now on this. I just want to think. Um with the wheels it's it's kind of making the function weird because if some guy wants to come over and grab the sword and the spikes are definitely on the way yeah of the of that certain warrior and also you have these spikes that is supposedly supposed to go over obstacles but you also have these extruding spikes in the center that at least on for my behalf, I'm a little confused about whether this wagon is supposed to be offensive or defensive, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, is it going to be hitched onto a faster animal if it's going to... Or, see, it's like you, you want to go up to it and grab the weapon, but you have all these spikes pointing against me. I, I, I don't know if I want to be near those kind of sharp spikes, you know? That's, yeah. that's how I see it. i just looking at it from like, hey, what if I was there... What if I'm a warrior? Need to get weapons type of uh, perspectives. 
Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I also think that your lighting is a little bit, because uh, your the the light source and the direction of your light, I don't necessarily think is working very well with what you're trying to show. Because you kind of have this weird lighting coming from like back back here, coming like towards it, at least according to this shadow right here. And then your your shadow right here is actually going a different direction. So maybe for this, just do kind of more of a simple top lighting situation where you know that all the planes that are facing upward are going to be lit and all of your planes that are not facing upward are not going to have direct direct lighting to them. So you can really start to... Uh, know exactly what's going on because because you don't necessarily need complex fancy lighting for a piece like this because it's it's just demonstrating or, or it's just um showcasing kind of like a prop or like a vehicle slash prop so it's important that you have your lighting real consistent overall I would say, you know, I'm just going in and drawing on this a little bit. Uh, figure out exactly how all your forms connect together, like where they're bolted together, how these are. It looks like you know how they're intersecting, but how are they like? How are they connected? Like, how are they bolted together, you know? Maybe you can have this kind of go out. You know, maybe, um, maybe something like that. Um, a lot of these, I would, I would also say focus on the, the silhouette. I think some of these forms that are that are right here maybe a little bit what i made a note on this specifically actually it says design could use a lot more fun push like the the push on this um design specifically i would say um because you want to make this for like a game or something let's see let's see i'll look up something as an example Um, let's see. I'm I'm looking at th something like thief. Like you, hmm. Uh, also with wagon with a weapon arsenal like that, it's basically a mobile storage, right? So you don't want to keep your weapons rusting in the rain, or you know. I know, I know it's not necessary, but you should definitely add a little bit of function of covering things up if necessary. You yeah. know, if you don't want to draw a roof, but at least uh, imply that there is a hub that could connect the roof over it or something. Um, yeah, here's what I was looking for. Like, the I, th I think the, the interesting aspect of this is kind of lacking from... from like the 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 f what what would it be, Doran? Like the the fun aspect, the realistic aspect of it is kind of missing. It's almost like, okay, this is a wagon. It's it's yeah, I... kind of interesting, but it could use a lot of a lot of push. I mean, it could have a spiked wheel for me, but try to put things away from the spiked wheel when I'm trying to grab my sword when it need. Or, you know, actually look look up real weapon racks, like yeah. medieval weapon racks in the museums and stuff. Nobody yeah, hooks up a bow, bow like that. No, yeah. no one, no one. Yeah, and, and the fact that, like, these spears right here are stuck so far down, someone would have yeah, to and, climb up on here. Up, yeah, and while pull, getting stabbed in the leg with those Yeah, things. pull this out, like, you know. Really high really high to get it and in and give it away and it'd be By very then, easy for it to get stuck in there stuff like that and there's like one that's like higher than the rest and 
you and know, dude, um, like all these. Did you did you notice those arrows in the middle that like, popping up right under those bows? Um, like, those yeah, like arrows. these. Like y you want to, okay. you know, arrows are usually stacked in quivers. Yeah. So, uh, so here's an idea. I would say, you know, maybe you could have something like this, and this is like, you know, connected in some way to this, and then this is actually, you know, a quiver right here, and then you exactly, have a bunch of yeah. your, and then you have like a bunch of your, you know, arrows sticking out of here, yeah. and then, like, oh, okay, maybe there's a, maybe there's a whole, a shield, like, you know, right here. And now, pe now archers, and maybe they have like little, I don't know, like windows or something that they can look through. I'm not sure exactly. I'll have to, I'd have to think about yeah, the that, design a little that, bit. That's that's a simple function. It's okay. Dude. Yeah, like little windows, and then you can yeah. show like, oh, look, there's, there's now there's like arrows stuck in here. Yeah. From the other side, from from blue team, you know. And this this could be one function that you could um that you could uh, put in, and you see this is so incredibly rough right now. Like you know, this design is not set in stone at all. I don't I don't think that don't commit until you have your idea and that you in an idea that you like, you know. Like how how are the supports? You know how does this come out? <clears throat> you know all kinds of stuff like that you know or like what if you, you you know you could like i think the function of this wagon is a little bit it, it's supposed to be like a like a like a weapon weapon holder i think yeah yeah arsenal yeah like and i ju i think it could be done a little bit more elegantly like if if i were to design this thing you want to focus on you want to focus on you know having a bunch of weapons and having a safe place that people can can go up to you know like maybe there there could be these big giant quivers that are actually like long right here maybe they have like you know like tons of oops tons of arrows in them and then maybe they have like little quivers that people can actually pick up and carry away when they're like maybe something like you know something like this that people can like pick up and carry away like just thinking about this kind of thing is very important you know and then you can be like oh how are and then you can do call outs like oh how is this how is this connected and then you can have like these little these little straps here or maybe this little like a little thing like a button that they push that releases this or a, or a little buckle you want like some way that they could grab it in, in a very fast way you know um and and maybe each side of the uh each side of this wagon has like a different kind of weapon on it or like easy access um a shield holder right here maybe you know maybe have this a lot more that kind of creates a tangent now with that border mm. you know with a with a shield holder you could you could create like a really cool a really cool look it could be like okay so how are these shields first you need to know like what is the shape of the shield and then how are they stacked and how do people get them off like if these if this is like the front and you want the shields maybe like this you know how do can, how does someone go up and uh, take it off what medieval vikings and norman knights used to hang their shields off the side of their ship yeah exactly That's, you see everything is out there man everything's yeah. out there you don't have to think a lot about on the side stuff. of the ship yeah they'd, they'd have their <laughs> ships and they'd have their you know if it's medieval, if you're doing anything medieval, the chances are it's there. Yeah, that's that's definitely that's definitely true. If chances are, yeah, but like you don't want people to have to climb way up on this whole 
thing just to grab a bow and you know it's like what if what if this these spiked wheels hit a bump all of a sudden this bow flies off and drops on the ground you know um all that kind of thing and then designing your shapes a little bit more elegantly with your your silhouette more in mind you know like you want to be able to break this silhouette up and make it more interesting and i think a lot of the time your function itself will make the silhouette more interesting you know i would i would like again repeating what i said like you need to be clear about if it's offensive or defense like especially the spikes coming out from the middle of the wheel is totally offensive type weapon yeah purpose so yeah definitely yeah that's why when you include all this confusing elements it's, it's really hard to understand what it's really for you know yeah i mean look at like different siege weaponry and stuff oh this is cool you can look up a battle wagons war wagon why are um, they so tiny yeah look at this <laughs> but yeah like different siege weaponry like you know, like there's there's wagons and, and stuff that's made to protect soldiers, you know, like Trojan horse. Like, look at this. See, it has like a whole roof on it that protects the people underneath of it from arrows and different stuff. Because this is going to be a target, you know. If, if soldiers have some secret way of firing 10 arrows at once that is going to be their, the way that they win the battle, then you better believe the enemy is going to try to take out those resupply wagons. Like, you, you can imagine this whole story behind it, you know? Then the resupply wagon needs to have a roof like this on it if there's people hiding under it who are getting re resupplied. <clears throat> you know? Oh. These guns, I hear they're, they were just the worst thing in the world. Always jamming and stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah, just look up, like, watch some documentaries of, like, siege wars and stuff, you know? Like, look at this awesome thing. All kinds That's of stuff. That's a nice like uh, apartment. Mobile yeah. apartment. Yeah. Uh, wa mm -hmm. Go watch, uh, even go watch, like, Lord of the Rings and stuff and just be, like, get inspired. You know, focus on function and stuff like that. But... That's that's what I would say for this wagon. I would say good job. Like you're you're using perspective. You're using um, you're using your 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 brain when it comes to this kind of stuff. I you know, but like this silhouette right here, I think is is pretty it's pretty just dull at this point. You know, maybe f figure out your function, but also just be like. How can you make this more interesting, you know? And you can start to make just random things on the silhouette. And there, there's a couple different ways to design, you know? You can you can make some cool shapes. And then you can, you know, turn it into something. Or you could do the opposite, which is like you can come up with an idea and then apply it to, these, to the outer surface. And then it becomes a cool shape. So there, there's all different ways to design. You know, I, I think just making it a little bit more interesting would go a long ways, you know. You could even do like three, three things and who knows. And then you start, you can start to do a line work and really think about like how, like where, like where are your spears at? You know, and your spears could double as offensive and defensive, you know, like maybe there's like a whole bunch of like, um, I don't know, depending on which way it rolls, let's say it rolls this way, you know, you could have a whole bunch of like spears sticking out like that. And then maybe they have, people have a way to go and grab them and take them off or just whatever. And it can really start to make interesting, interesting shapes and ideas within that. You know, maybe there's like a big old cover on top or like a roof or something. But anyways, it's a pretty nice, uh, nice design. I just think pushing it 
and focus on your rendering and how how this stuff is assembled and all that. That's pretty much all I have to say about this. I think we we discussed this one pretty pretty well. Mm. You want to do yours? Yeah. All right. There you go. Oh yeah. Did we uh, switch? Yep, yeah, I clicked on you. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look, look, look at all this stuff. All the battle wagons. Um, see, all this. And speaking of uh, defensive, look at this. Look at look at the Da Vinci uh, circular uh, wagon cannon thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can you can just do all that. You can definitely turn this the interior into arsenal and. When enemy comes around, it immediately becomes something like this. You can have like double wall that you can erect or something. You know, yeah, you can. You you definitely have to look into what you're uh, trying to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, see, the cool miniatures. There's crazy fantasy ones. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll find a lot of random stuff. All right, so uh, my next yeah. person would well, be. I just have one thing to say. Odds are, if it ex if if you come up with the idea, especially if it's medieval, like you said earlier, it already it's exists, there. and all you all you have to do is reskin it and look at it in a different way. Hmm. So, uh, this is from Nico Flow. Um, he made a Batman Green Lantern design here, and. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's really monumental. The composition is nice. He's in the center. It's all powerful, menacing looking. The perspective is we're kind of looking upwards, which is great. Uh, so the first thing I do is I turn things into a black and white. So my eyes do not get distracted by all these shiny colors, right? So this way I can see exactly how the silhouettes are looking and whatnot. So a couple of things I'm confused about right now is that the... Uh, you have a black cape like that, but then you have like uniform rim light. And what I would say is that these capes would totally block out the uh, rim lights, right? And also, uh, you seem to know, when you when you have so many like uh, details like this, you get confused with uh, all the surface. Is it curvy or straight? You know, you you get all confused. So. That happens and that's okay. So in order to combat that problem, what you need to do is you need to just plot it out better, right? So for example, if you look at the chest, you can definitely see that the logo and the chest plate is not symmetrical, right? And, um, and you can see the thigh looks very bent. Like, I think you're supposed to make his leg go backwards, but the curve on his hip shows that it's pointing towards us, right? His, his knees are pointing towards us, but it's actually his leg is, like, bending backwards, right? That's why you have this weird bent thigh effect, right? So what I did is, since you wanted to keep the rim lights, I would totally add to that light source, which is from behind and from below. See? So now you can have the light shining under the cape and on your hero. Same thing up here on his face. And I also wanted to add uh, top light to give a more uh, theatrical look because, because you have it on your on his face and chest anyway, right? You, you have it on, on the top of him. So I made it more pronounced. And I really liked your uh, original, this ring spark effect i just wanted to emphasize more on that and i did this i may i may i may have overkilled but you can kind of see that all the lights are like uh reflecting on his armor if you're going to do a shiny material that might help and also i fixed the symmetry and the general flatness of the chest armor so now you can really see that his chest is popping out and of course i uh detailed the face a little bit more um and I also made the uh, green embers and the ring light into another source of light. Yeah, that's what I uh, tried to. Also, one other thing I noticed is that you 
tend to use a lot of soft brush and I would highly advise against using soft brush everywhere, right? You can definitely use soft brush where it's necessary, but not everywhere. That's why when you ha when you see this, like it, all the lines become so blurred, even though you have strong highlights here and there, it becomes really hard to read. You know, things uh, things bleed into each other. Uh, I think when when did, when did I mention like uh, two weeks ago? I think I I definitely mentioned about bleeding edges, if if that's the correct term. I'm sorry, my English is not my first language. There it is. Hey, is it? <laughs> I, I was gonna say from you, Colton. I was gonna say, gotta wait for Burin to say that English is not his first language. This I'll stream. say that every episode. Okay, Do you it. can drink to that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like like this. See, uh, Colton said cut lines. Yeah, this is something new word I learned today. Look at all the cut lines of the armor. See, you, even though you can do these highlights with soft brush, cut lines need to be really clear. So that's why you can tell which part is which. Uh, and where it belongs to, right? And also with, like, if you have really sharp edges on the details, you definitely need to use somewhat harder brush, right? Mm -hmm. And also, and I, I know Power Rangers not related, but 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 here's what I'm trying to say, right? Look at looking at, like, because of the hard edges, even though it's the same tone, even though it's the same color, we can tell. Oh yeah, he's wearing that weird uh, red snake skin thing underneath it. Yeah, I know texture is important too, but uh, before textures, uh, the edges are super important. Yeah. So yeah, and I just want to look up the Deadpool picture here with the uh, yeah. You can you can definitely see that even though it's the same tone, same color, the material might be close, but uh, look at look at his shoulder and his uh, uh, biceps and his neck, right? And his green mask. Everything is so sharp edge. If it's a separate item, then it, it needs to have a really sharper edges. Even the rim light gets sharp. See, like it's so easy to separate what is what. So yeah, next time when you make a painting, try to uh, keep in mind about the edges and uh, how to make keep elements separately. So. But, but it's cool. I really like that. I'm a huge fan of uh, Green Lantern. I know I didn't read all the uh, story arcs, but I definitely read them. What's the one? Sinestro Core? Yeah, that's my favorite one. So yeah, that's my advice for Nico Flo. So Colton, are you ready to continue or do you want me to uh, keep going? Um, I'm in the middle of the paint over. People can okay, watch okay, if cool. they want. Or Okay, I'll, 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 I'll go. I'll go with the... Uh, uh, two persons with the uh, okay. character design. So uh, Weinberg, Platypus, and uh, Quisty, you guys both have similar issues I like to mention. So uh, I'll start with this. So I can see that this is a very uh, macho man, muscular as hell. You will uh, snap your neck with his pinky. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's cool. I I like how the like the face is so scary you would not want to run into this uh <laughs> face in the dark or anywhere so anyways uh, jokes aside um my advice would be i know it's ten i know it's supposed to be stylized i know it's supposed to be cartoony i know it's supposed to be not realistic right but even though any cartoon any style anything is interpretation of realism right with that in mind, I know you don't. I know you may not be interested in really realistic things, but I'm not talking about style here. I'm talking about having real knowledge of anatomy and muscles, and be willing to go out there and study about it and make a painting out of it. Right. So now, what I see here is that it's very noisy. Right. You have all these fiber muscles and all these like. Yeah, fibers, veins, and you know it's like like what Colton said. You need to have a rest area, okay? And, uh, and I'll tell you why. So see, it's it's like super sharp here, and then not only you added like a cell shade effect, you kind of also added like strokes, like uh, cross hatches here and there. 
Um, I understand what you are trying to do here, but uh, my advice would be try to look at, again, real life references. I know it might be boring, but if what you're drawing is trying to imitate real life, then you have to look at this. There's no way around it. Now, now look at this image, right? This is an exercise muscle guy. Now, all the uh, doctors, sportsmen, all these people did all these references for us to take for free, right? You have to respect that, right? These guys know their thing. So when you look at these images, you, you know that these guys over, I don't know, like 300 years of medical exercise, they know which muscle belongs where, and all the bodybuilders know if you move which way, which muscle would be expanded, right? So pectoral muscles, deltoids, and all that. So what I'm trying to say here is that each muscle group needs to look like it belongs to that muscle group. Like, okay, look at the shoulder here, right? Y your shoulder looks like this is one group, this is one group, this is one group, and this is one group, right? And uh, yeah, so you need to make it look like it each muscle group actually belongs to that muscle group, even though it doesn't matter how big or small it is, okay? So same here, right? Chest, face, uh, abs, uh, quads, etc. So another thing we see here is that you are, uh, sorry. They're missing symmetry, right? Okay. These are both of the legs, but I just flipped it, right? Like, um, if I go here, I'm going to use my magical red pen. It reminds me of my uh, evil teacher that used to give me an F when I was in there. Anyway, so uh, check this out, right? This muscle is narrow here, see? And you have like a V-shaped knee here, but you have a U-shaped knee here. And this lump is like that, but you have it like, it's like a tumor growing in the front. See that? And like... The width of these toes is not as equal to these toes, right? And I know, I know, there are people with lopsided uh, ab muscles, right? But everything else is symmetrical, right? You you don't you don't see a lot of people with long arm and a short, you know, long and short hands. That doesn't usually happen, unless we check the medical books. So uh, same thing here, man. You have a big lump of muscle here. And you have a very small one here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this character was doing like different exercise, targeting different muscle groups. Or maybe he's not human at all, but he looks humanoid to me. So, um, yeah, same thing, same thing with these fists. Like, you have very thick index finger. And then the middle finger gets narrow. And then the ring finger gets small. And then the pinky is like, I don't know, like he's rib or I don't know. Uh, yeah, this 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 fist kind of looks correct-ish, in a way. But then you have like really big. Ugh, you, these are not correct. Uh, veins are okay, but yeah, you have very sudden vein popping, which does not transition well. So again, good references, right? Like. Uh, Look at the, uh, hmm, sorry. Look at, look at this, oh, it's red on red. I apologize, green is better. We 100% here, yeah. This muscle needs to pop out here, which you kind of did correct. I think it's here, so yeah. Yeah, because I think we know this because we look at our hands all the time, right? When we're cooking, when we're opening door, when we're holding the phone, when you're grabbing from the, I don't know, when we're in the bus in the metro, we hold from the railings. We know that this muscle pops out, right? So this is familiar to you. That's why you know this. See? So you just need to keep looking at things more to memorize them. Now, um, now look at the look at the legs, right? If you if you look at my leg reference up here, um. It, see, because 
you don't know how legs are, right? And it's not your fault. We don't really look at them. Nobody goes out wearing Speedos these days, unless it's like on a very hot island, <laughs> you know? Then nobody looks at them when they do. Yeah, and that's why most guys skip leg day, and that's fine. That's, <laughs> yeah. So, um, look, at, look at all the muscle groups you have here. It's, uh, see, you have things falling from here and then here, but now you just have this one lump and then this, and then you have extra. I don't know who has these muscles. And this one, like, you have this muscle, but then it's narrow on your thing. And then you have, like, this should go out like that, but it went curvy like this, see? So, yeah, I know it's stylized, but you have to look into real world stuff. So... Here we are. So, okay, look. Look at Incredible Hulk, right? Isn't he incredible? I like that guy. So, um, look at this. One group. One group. One group. One group. One group, right? Group. Ribs, group. Group, right? There is no crazy, like, oh, there's, like, subgroups, and subdivisions, and all this shredded, right? Maybe you're not trying to draw Hulk, but but I but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here, right? Yeah, this is a scene where he gets shot by the Chitari on the roof. Um, maybe my memory is wrong, but look, group, big group, big group, big group, right? And even your light weight should signify if you're gonna try to go in with these crazy shredded, like dehydrated guys, you know. Actually, all these bodybuilders dehydrate like, like a camel before they go into a contest. So they're uh, each of the their, their skin cells get so hydrated that dehydrated that everything pops out. Yeah, like this guy, right? Look, a group, a group, 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 group. See, abs are one group. Why? We don't see it like this, see? We see it like this, right? Group. I know, I know. Why? What is this Buran? What about him? Well, he's like the upper part of the chest muscle that's connected to your collarbone, right? Neck muscles. You can look at his back, right? Look. Traps. One group. One group. He's on his spine. One. One. See? That's it, and and my overpaint is this, right? Um, so you can see my overpaint with uh, cyan colored uh, East version. I didn't bother to paint on the other side because I wanted to make a point here. So yeah, uh, these rib muscles are not like that. Uh, yeah, like. This is this this goes like one big and then you have your ribs here. But from here you can see the I don't know which muscle it's called, but Bruce Lee has it really big. It's right under his armpits. Lats, I think. Thank you. Yeah, that one, lat pull. Um and his posture is really weird. I don't know if he's trying to like uh slouch or he's trying to puff his chest because you seem like you mixed both poses in here. So, yeah, symmetry, muscle groups, look into real life studies. And same thing, uh, like uh, Nico Flo had like that bent uh, thigh thing. You have a bent feet. So it almost looks like he's wearing a high heel shoes, but an invisible one. So, yeah, you need, you need to make sure he's actually really standing on the ground. And again, up here... See, I know you're trying to go for this weird perspective angle, which is really extreme for what you're trying to do. And if you look at, see, his heels are way down here. If I do a draw through, his heels are here. But if at this angle, his heels are over here, right? So yeah, think about that. Always think about what is behind your object. Otherwise, you will end up with uh, rib muscle lats, you know? 
because because you don't know you 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 didn't look at it but it's okay it's, it's not your fault you just need to uh you just need to memorize them and just keep going you know and i know yeah, if you don't want to memorize it then always keep a reference next to yourself all you need to do is memorize the 1500 muscle groups and learn yeah, how to draw them from the, every angle also the 201 bones yeah and learn how to draw yeah. them from every angle yeah and uh, material study and surface scatter and all that. <laughs> I know there's a lot. That's a lot, dude. Uh, but concept artists. Uh, we didn't sign up because it was flexible, easy. right, bro? So uh, okay, Quisty. Uh, Next one. Kind of the same with Weinberg, but you're trying to do uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, fan art, so. Okay, again, with uh, look at the finger width, and uh, it's okay, I mean. But yeah, try to look at real references. Again, animation, manga is an inter interpretation of realism, right? So you always have to go back to what is real, right? So you can look at this, his fist, look at those shoulder muscles. I'm sorry I couldn't find any muscular guys tonight. At the club? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, I did a quick overpaint down here. You see? Yeah, again. Like, look at look at Goku's drawing here. Uh, art by Neko R. It's not... I think it's not official, but again, right? Group. One muscle group. Muscle group. Muscle group. Muscle group. Lat muscle group. His abs are one group. His chest is one group, right? So we can understand it is like you don't have these crazy shredded like you know so um yeah so I, so i did an overpaint here see look at look at your uh, finger width and the central symmetry and and all that uh, with this hand, you won't even, you won't almost see the biceps. But here, you try to show every muscle. Like, I don't know what these guys are. Yeah. This is probably his wrist. But I know this is his shoulder. You know? So, but, no. You can just take this pose at the mirror. You can just do this... You can do this pose in the mirror, and this will be your shoulder, and you will have a little bit of your biceps popping, and this will be your forearm. Yeah. And also, um, if I turn everything up, this, this green power light is really, doesn't look like a light enough, right? So check this out. If I turn this black and white, Uh, sorry. Yeah, it disappears. See? And white. See? I know, I know. Green color is coming out through the contrast with the warm tones of the skin, but yeah. I always need to check uh, black and white tone. So I'll just do a quick color dodge and let's test it real quick. Okay, I'm going to take the green and soft brush. Oh boy, see? Now now it's really glowing, isn't it? And the center of the light is usually whiter. Than, yeah, like that. So if I turn black and white, a ching, it checks out. Yeah, that's how it should be if yeah, it's um it's all my opinion, so. That's like your opinion, man. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the uh, Ryu from a uh, Street Fighter. I think this is kind of what you're trying to look up, right? All the fighting game characters and kind of look at how they, how how the camera perspective works, foreshortening all that. There's something to uh, look up and uh, notice from every image you find, especially if you know how to read them. So uh, yeah, that's for me to Quisty and uh, Weinberg Platypus. Great. Yeah, Colton, um, if you want to take over, I 
Sure. I'm just still working on my overpaint right now. Um, okay. I don't know if Sebastian is in here. Let's see. Um, share screen. All right. So I'm working on. So I'm, I've been working on this. Um, are you in here, Sebastian? I don't know if he is. The term's over now in Art Center, so. Um, I would say there's a, a couple of things that I'm going to touch on. I'll touch a little bit on the fundamentals. I'll touch a little bit on the uh, lighting and your local values. And I'll also touch some on design and just design thinking and how shapes uh, especially of sci-fi, because I think that there's a lot of people out there who have trouble with sci-fi and don't really know how to make it not look generic. Um, I don't. I don't really think this piece looks all that generic, to be honest. It's it's pretty nice, but anyway. So this is his, and then I was I've been working on a uh, on a bit of a paint over. It's not done yet, but uh, I I did a couple little tweaks here and there i think there's a number of um i think there's a number of perspective um a couple little perspective issues here and there just want to find the I'll, I'll draw it on really quick um where's the where's the perspective of this thing so you got it I'm not exactly sure. I'll turn it off. You know, I'm not exactly sure where the horizon line is. I'll follow this. See, it's kind of all over the place. If I'm following, like, these lines, it's like there's, like, a vanishing point right here. But then, okay, I think the vanishing point's right here. This feels a bit weird right here because it crosses right there and then these lines are missing a bit so it's it's somewhere generally in that area i feel i feel like there's a little bit of um there's I, I I'm not sure exactly what this pipe right here is doing, what direction it's going. I feel like it should, I, I feel like it it wants to be going like in this direction, uh, according to the perspective. You know, maybe even like this, but I'm not sure exactly. But I'll I'll ignore that for now and I'll I'll more talk about because I know that I know Sebastian looks uh knows perspective, so I'll uh let him figure out exactly where the horizon line and everything is and talk a little bit more about design. So first off, I just did a little bit of um adjustments to the value i wanted to brighten this area up a little bit and then use that to start painting over i want to i need to i really need a let's see i'm gonna focus i'm just gonna there um with with sci-fi it's kind of difficult because you want your you want your shapes to really be talking to each other, but it's difficult because it ends up looking it, – it can end up looking really generic if you're not careful. I would say the, for the, the biggest thing is you want to figure out a specific shape language to use. And you want – obviously you want to um, keep in mind your, your big, medium, and small which is your like your one two three which is like your you know your big your big shape your medium shapes and then your small shapes that are like 
that are like connecting or something. Very, it's very important to keep stuff like that in mind. So with, with your, your big, medium, and small shapes in mind, you really want to focus on, on how your design is working. You know, all these shapes, I can actually turn, uh, I'll take this up and I'll turn this off and I'll talk about your, um, I'll talk about your design specifically. I think that there's some pretty cool elements in here. You know, I, I think all these are pretty cool, but I don't necessarily see why they are there. Does this panel open or is it bolted in like a specific way? I'm not sure exactly why it's there. Um, um, here's, here's, I can uh, show you some, let me look at some, mm, some interiors. I think Doom is an, is an amazing example of this kind of stuff. Because Doom has such cool shape language. And I don't mean to use Doom as reference. I, I want to look at, at Doom to see what they're doing correctly and what they're and what we can actually learn from them. Um, let me see. I, I want to find. I know there's a couple real cool pieces that. Hmm. Let's think. I don't know if this is actually concept art or if this is fan art. DLC content, okay. Yeah, you can see how this, this person's shape language is working, how they have these high density detail areas, like right here. And then they have areas that really don't have a lot on them, big areas of rest. Like they'll have these, they'll have these dark areas that are reading very graphically, and they'll have these areas that are not as graphic. Um, pattern and repetition and in your principles. What what is it called? Principles of design. You know, <clears throat> these. You really want to keep this in mind when you're going, when you're doing sci-fi, because this is almost all you're thinking about the whole time. You're thinking about your principles of design, you know, your, your patterns and, and what, what elements are repeating, uh, your contrasts, light next to dark and, um, like light inside of dark and dark inside of light, stuff like that. Um, your emphasis, which is like, um, you know, one, one red glowing light inside of a blue environment, or for example, like that really emphasizes that, uh, balance, which is like, if, if you have a large object and like, like the scale, you know, so, so for balance, it's like, you know, if you have a, like that, like this feels off balance, you know, so you, you really need to keep that in mind. Like if you have one big object, and this is like a literal scale almost you can think of, you know? And you can think of like, like a whole bunch of objects like this. Like you need your balance. It's, it's a literal balance too. Um, like does it feel like it's like your piece is gonna slide off the page one way or the other? You know, you can do this all different kinds of ways too. You can have like, you know, like like a little piece right here, and then a big piece right here. Like it, it kind of feels balanced. Like there's this weight, there's this visually, there's a weight to it that you want to distribute. And this is really important when you are talking about sci-fi work because a lot of a lot of sci-fi work is almost like oh i i think i've i've seen some sci-fi work before and it's just a bunch of panels and it's just a bunch of um bolts and stuff stuck in to 
stuck into the pieces and everything. Uh, is, is anybody else in the chat experiencing a bunch of lag? Because I'm, I'm getting, a, I got a message from Christina that it's lagging a whole bunch. And I don't know if it's lagging for her, for everybody, or just her. Um, but anyways, so then you also have proportion and scale, like, you know, your, your big, medium, small, that kind of stuff. Harmony, which is like things, things working, um, together. Um, hmm. well, you can, you can go to the YouTube channel and see if that's lagging. The, the link is in the discord or if not, um, after we're done in a couple of hours, this will automatically go up on YouTube, automatically uploaded. So if worse comes to worse, just watch that on YouTube. Um, and then rhythm and movement, which is like, you know, you, you can get a lot of that through perspective and like acceleration of lines, stuff like that. You know, like if, if you draw like in a, an environment, for example, you know, and you, you know, you, you want some like rhythm and movement, you know, you, you have like, you can have like a road that's like that, you know, like this, this has an acceleration to it. You know. There. And then um if you have like I think I think this this is one of my favorite illustrations regarding the principles of design. It it has good explanations and it has good um, images that represent it. So I, I'll actually, I can post the, uh, the, actually I'll just do this. I'll post this in the discord for everybody in, in, um, the stream art share. If anybody wants it, I just posted it in there. So these are these a lot of these elements like you'll definitely think about these elements every time you do art It's very important. However, I I would say especially in sci-fi because it's so easy to not know exactly what to do You want to keep these sort of things in mind So let me go ahead and Okay, so I think that um like with this piece what I did was I went ahead and and there's there's actually some elements on on Sebastian's that I that I quite quite like a bit and I'll I might bring them back in in a way. I think I'll just merge all these. Well. Yeah, it's fine. So when you, when you're when you're doing your cut lines, you want to think about your your big, medium and small. You want to think how your how your shapes are broken up, you know, like if if I were to break up this panel right here, I would think, what are my big shapes? What are my, my medium shapes? And what are my small shapes? You know, you can just start messing around a little bit. I'll make this on a new layer, actually. You know, you can start messing around with different, different stuff, how these are, uh, how these are broken up. Oops. You know, how, how your pieces are broken up, different like shapes working together. Um, let me think. how how your uh machines are assembled and everything you know you can have stuff like this or you can go in and do something like you know like like this like maybe there's um maybe this panel is removed 
like right here or maybe it's not bolted together like that maybe it's actually bolted on like this or connected right and then you can go in and be like and then this is like a little release area that's like that and then this whole thing right here maybe that opens up and it's a panel for a vent or something inside of so hey uh ray it looks like ray's here um blank art i believe you know you can really start thinking about how your how your pieces come together and maybe there can be like a different ways that this comes together like that like thinking about all that kind of stuff you know and it looks like you're starting to think about that kind of thing but it's just not um it's not completely like thought through yet and and I think going back to your you know your elements of design and and really thinking about how this stuff because sci-fi sci-fi is really weird in the way that it's so open and can be interpreted as like literally anything you know like what are machines going to look like in a hundred thousand years like or, or in a few hundred years like we really have no idea anything goes but at the same time you can tell when sci-fi looks dumb and when sci-fi looks really cool so it's like, how do you solve that problem? And a lot of it is just, I like to say, it's kind of just making up stuff and figuring out like, you know, inventive, inventive thinking of like, because you know how things are assembled, you know, there's physics and things come together and there's material and there's all kinds of stuff like that. But like, you know, like if, if I, uh, like if this pipe goes into the wall, for example, it makes sense that there's this kind of housing that maybe like a metallic, like a really, you know, metallic or something housing that it connects to the wall with. Even though it may not be like this at all in the future, like our brains are like, ex expect something like that to happen, you know? And then, like, maybe there could be some breakups in these areas. Maybe some different um, stuff like this. And then talking about those areas of really dense details, you know, you can go in to, like, parts like this and be like, oh, there's a bunch of tech details. Like, this is the access panel where the where the uh, operator or where the where the what is it the dude who fixes this kind of stuff will go in and work on his stuff you know like really dense details everything you know almost like a, the shell is torn back of like a jet or an airplane and you you see all these interesting details inside and sci-fi in a lot of ways is very graphic like you you can almost make just like graphic shapes and then just render them out and it's like sci-fi but you just have to focus a lot on your the, the thought that you put in to how your how your stuff works you know like i would i would be like hmm like what is this piece he, right here doing you know, it looks like, I'll make a new layer. It looks like, you know, this is coming out and coming around like this. You know, and maybe, and it's coming through here. Like, what other ways could we could we show that, you know? Like, um, maybe, let's see. Maybe, you know, this could, could come out. You, you, and you also want your big, medium, small to pertain to, like, your pipes and stuff, too. Like, I don't know. Like, this could come out and go up like that and then go up like that. And then maybe there's, like, another little pipe that comes out and is, like, running along this one parallel to it. And then it, like, comes around and goes like that.
Uh, what the heck? Can you hear me, Bird? Yeah, I do. That was weird. My headphones just turned off. Something went beep. Yeah, my headphones just shut themselves down for some reason. Uh, can everybody in the disc in the uh, on the stream hear me? I know, I know they couldn't hear me for a second, but okay, great. I heard you through and through, man. Don't worry. Okay, great. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, it's still coming through. So, you know, and then maybe, and you could have like a couple more that are coming on, and maybe like you know, these are this one's falling through, and maybe there's a third one, but this one actually like breaks off and goes another direction, something like that. There's a uh, there's a design lecture on on YouTube by a guy who's who's much better at sci-fi than I am. It's by a guy named Alex Senecal. Um, I'll look it up really quick. <clears throat> this guy. I'll I'll link it in the uh, in the Discord and stream art share. But he talks about to common sci-fi mistakes. He's really good at design, and he, he's talking all about. Um, I recommend this this video so much. I send it to everybody that I am trying to teach about design, and he, he's um he just picks a bunch of random art from like the internet and discusses it and talks about how to improve it. And he's such a good designer that he can really just tear things down and explain what's going wrong and what's going right with different designs. And that's actually a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about right now. I'm just not doing as good of a job as he does. So, you know, like he'll, he'll talk about like different pipes and like this is kind of what I'm talking about right now is these, these different pipes. And he pulls up work like Paul Pepera right here who has an unbelievable control of his pipes and different big, medium, and small shapes. And he talks about all that kind of stuff. So I really recommend this video. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. And it is in the Discord right now for you guys under Stream Art Share. So going on, I'll um, go ahead and, you know, and like, like what color are these? You know, is this pipe, for example? And then maybe these pipes right here. And I'm just really roughly blocking them in. I can render them later. You don't need to think about rendering. You don't need to think about any of that stuff until after you you have your your idea and what you're gonna do. So you know, like like a couple different pipes, maybe like here, hold on. Like this. really going in and figuring out your stuff like this. And I'm not rendering them right now. I'm just thinking about how they're working graphically. And if I, if I even want to keep these or, or not, you know, <clears throat> all this kind of stuff and how, like, how would this pipe go up and connect, you know, like, would it go up like this? And then this one might go like that. You know, and how would these fit into there? All that kind of stuff. You know, and then I might go in and, you know, just render this out a little bit to, to see how the forms would read. Like this. Maybe pull a couple of my colors from over here. Because this will have to turn, this form will actually have to turn if it's going in right there. Then you'll have some bounced light from down there. And... Oops. There. You know, kind of 
that. There, you know, like different pipes coming in like that. Um, maybe some stuff coming in like that. How is this connecting uh, up here? You know, is there a slit that's like, like this? Then this could actually go inside like, like that. And maybe, like, you, you really just want to think about how, how it all connects together. You know. Like I would, I would definitely redo all these. Um, but based on the that idea that I had earlier, probably of like the a couple different little cables that are like moving, moving around. I might take this and just. You know, there's all kinds of ways to draw pipes. Like I, I don't, you know, you could use a mixer brush. You just draw a sphere and then use the mixer brush to draw it. I'm not gonna go on a pipe rendering tutorial right now, but. I would definitely, uh, there's, there's YouTube tutorials and stuff that you can just look up, like drawing easy way to draw pipes or whatever. I don't know. So then maybe coming back and So just doing some some details like that and really thinking about how the shapes are are speaking to each other. You know, like maybe there's this big old area like right here that is kind of like this out. It, it comes out and then a bunch of your pipes and stuff are actually coming out of of this area specifically. So sci-fi is is weird in that way that it's there's so much um there's so much that's open to just doing whatever you know like i think some of these shapes in this area right here might be a just might just feel a little bit awkward together you know going in and really thinking about how this stuff is working together And using reference from from real life. Come on, there. Maybe repeating some shapes like that. Um, Anyway, I mean, I think that th I have explained pretty much what I was wanting to talk about. Burin, if you are there. What? Burin, can you hear me? You hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do. I was, uh, I was lost for a second. Oh, no. Yeah. That's that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. Um, just the lighting. I would I would I would also say um, make sure your perspective on all these pipes is solid because people are gonna feel it if it's not like which which direction are are these pipes facing? You know, like it it feels like some of these pipes in here are questionable, have questionable perspective, and just purpose. 
I think the purpose of these pipes is a little bit unclear too. It almost feels like you're trying to make like a sci-fi world and also a random pipes everywhere world at the same time. Like I don't think in in I don't think like this wall back here would be made by the same people who made this pipe coming out at this kind of awkward angle right here. If if you want to um do something like that, I would probably keep it consistent throughout. Like and the same with this pipe. I think this pipe is not rendered out very well. I I'm not sure which perspective it's in, where it's going or where it's really even coming from. <clears throat> uh there. Wait, what no. Which one? This is your this is the original, I think, yeah. So stuff like that, you know, I would probably, you know, really focus on keeping a consistent language throughout the whole the whole design to make it feel like oh, the whole place was built by the same people under the same at the same time under the same format unless it's not then you make that very apparent but right now i just feel like it's not working all that all a bunch of these pieces aren't working well with each other because it feels a bit random so anyway boren are you painting on something or is that it uh, what do you mean? Are you working on a paint over right now? Mm, I'm just waiting for my turn to uh, give critiques. You ready to give it? Yeah, yeah, of course. All right. Oh, I had I actually totally forgot. I had one more thing to talk about. Um, if if you want to make the storytelling better with this, then I would probably go ahead and just quickly. Or not necessarily quickly, but I would say if you really want this to be a storytelling piece, you know, I'd I'd say maybe make a couple make a couple dudes in here. Like that. You know, have them have some nice reflections. Maybe a shadow. Oops. Like that, like maybe some sci-fi dudes like walking through here, like exploring this place. And then your bug right here. I, I, um, it took me a long time to even see this bug initially. Um, I would, I would say pull him out just a little bit. Like you don't want him to catch the, catch the full attention of everybody, but, um, just make them pop out a little bit more, maybe, by maybe doing something like, maybe put a vent right behind him that has some, like, steam and stuff coming out of it. Like, like there is kind of a vent behind him. I would say put a vent behind this bug and make some, like, steam coming out of it and then just... So just so he reads a little bit better, see? Like now it feels almost like and you can put some really identifiable pieces to make us feel like, oh whoa, this is a bug, you know, like legs and stuff like that. I'm actually just gonna do this. You know, like here's a like there's a couple legs and pieces that come off like antenna and maybe some, you know, hair. And my Photoshop's frozen. Nope. My pen stopped working. Can't draw. You go to your... I'll, I'll try to reset my Cintiq and you go to your paint over Burin because my pen just stopped working. Are we going to go back to the same painting after that? Yeah, I'll go back to this one and finish it off real quick. Or I'll, I'll just finish it off with my mouse really quick, actually. Um, you know, I'll put some identifiable spots like this and if, if you want it to look dangerous put dangerous looking parts on it you know like black widow stuff like that but and then maybe you can have like a little a little bug like hiding right here that's going to ambush them if if it's like in a, a scene where they're going to be attacked you know maybe like a little bug um up in up in this area hiding um what was the thing he was asking for mostly like what was he wanted us to focus on on this piece oh, i don't know I, I read it earlier let me go look um 
Because it can go a million ways, right? An eerie like, sewer system infested with creepy crawlers that camouflage with a main color scheme possibly might include some people to add storytelling. Still a work in progress, so I'm open to change the narrative and lighting. Yeah, he's he's pretty open with this. But yeah, I mean, if if you're wanting to, the bugs to camouflage with the colors in here, then yeah, just add add the colors onto the bugs, you know, like you know, whatever, like this kind of stuff. Maybe the bugs have like a specific part of the pipe that they like to sit on. And then the, the people walking through it, maybe they're maintenance guys, maybe they're soldiers. It doesn't, you know, the, then it can change with whatever the spec is. Like you make up the spec, so you can change it from a maintenance dude to a soldier to a, I don't know, a Viking, like whatever you want. The the important part is how it's reading graphically. The rest you can find reference and details and stuff to... Why is my Wacom pen not working? Anyways, that's, that's about it for me. Buren, I am switching to yo screen. Sure. This is a stupid pen. Hopefully this doesn't mess everything up. I'm unplugging my tablet. I hope so. So, I, I hope not. So, um, yeah, we have Rel here. Uh, this person gave and us... And it went black. There it is. Okay. So, this person gave us uh, this for the... Hold on. What's going on, Colton friend? Sorry, dude. My... my... Cintiq is not working right now and I can't get it to work so I think I'm done with paint overs for today or else it's going to mess up our whole stream so um, yeah we see this uh, really cool medieval fantasy type character with uh, really big metallic arms and uh, we can see that you did a, a couple of material studies that is very good um, also you tried different color variations that's great and uh, we can also see that you did a couple of thumbnails before committing on one. And uh, you asked us about uh, why do guys do these thumbnails? Are they like, why is it sometimes only silhouette? Why does why does everybody do it differently, right? Uh, I'll try to go into this. So um, right here, I see that he, uh, uh, your posture is kind of... Uh, blocking the most important part, which is this giant metallic arm. That's the most coolest part of the character, I would say. This is the thing where you can emphasize what it can do, what it's made of, made out of, what its power, what its weakness, what does it look like, and um, yeah, is it mechanical or is the human flesh arm inside? And also with this pose, it's kind of weird. It's like, uh, it's like it's pushing its shoulder forward too much, you know? So, but you also have this hand putting, resting on a sword that's blocking it as well. So that's why you have these two conflicting elements happening right here. Uh, what I did was, I tried to, uh, here, number one, I tried to uh, fix your uh, pose, but see, when that happens, the sword and the resting arm completely blocks off the robotic or this uh, metallic arm. So what you need to do is, you need to flip the character and make the most important part look towards us. You see, I wrote it here. It's the unique part of this character design. And um, yeah, and you can definitely go crazy with some embroideries, uh, how many people this character killed with this hand, or it can have, I don't know, like uh, portraits, um, animal embroideries, shapes, carvings, uh, diamonds. All that stuff, which is great. Uh, here, with your material study, you can always push it further. You always need to have not just one, right? You always, If it's an iron ball, you need to have a couple of iron balls. But you can just follow one. But still keep in mind, you, you, need to, you need to look at the other ones and kind of understand, oh, okay, is it worn out? Is it chrome? Is it polished? 
all that, right? You need to expand your knowledge on that as you go along. So with all these, uh, I don't know which was the intended cut line or anything, but yeah, this is how I did it. But this is mostly from memory. And um, also I tried to bleed in the background because the Fresnel effect, uh, it's this weird European name. Fresnel. F-R-E-S. I, I call it the Fresnel, but yeah, people call it Fresnel. Is it F-R-E-S-N-L? I think it is. It's, it's probably S2. Okay, fine. But it's a curved letter. So look up Fresnel effect. Okay. Okay. Because, because the because the top part of the armors is it's curved. It's not it's not clean cut like that, right? It's it's curved face. It's not straight face, right? So that's why the background whiteness will bleed into it, right? You have to understand if if you put your character in a white environment like this, it's always better to integrate it just a little bit, right? Integrate uh, characters in there just a little bit for extra added uh, yeah. believability, like, like this. Because eh? well, what I usually see is that a lot of people just slap these characters on either gray or black or white background, and like there is no shadow, for example, right? I'm not saying you should always have shadow, but if you add like a little soft brush shadow like this, it will definitely add to the oh this for this character does exist it's not a sticker it's actually some kind of 3d effect right mm -hmm. and moving on so right look look at all these references right it's all metallic and it's all in a white background because here you're trying to do a white background character that's why you need to look up these okay so you can definitely see how strong the shadow can be how the highlights look like and yeah, white environment is either snow or a studio photo. Yes, I know some sci-fi movies have really white environments, maybe The Matrix or really white corridors, mm -hmm. interior designs, etc. So whichever you're doing, try to follow the one that you really picked. And uh, up here, I, I did a little uh, 3D render up here. You can totally see how the floor and the ceiling effects on its base color. Now we're looking at a perceived color, right? You need to study about real color and perceived color. Everything we see here now is a perceived color. So, yeah. And uh, so you ask about thumbnails now. I mean, uh, silhouettes. Look, what, what is this, right? It's people. Uh, we don't know exactly what these people are, but we can tell what they do. We can tell who they are. We can tell... What are they doing, right? Okay, humans and animals notice uh, their brain works this way. The first thing that people see is motion, okay? If thing moves, we notice it, right? Second thing we notice is the silhouette. And the third thing we notice is the details, colors, texture, and so on, right? So, again, we're doing flat picture. Nothing is moving. So what do we settle on? Silhouettes, right? So um, this will show you basically the first information about what this character is, right? Is it weak? Is it stronger? Is it is it an old person? Is it a child, right? Look at look. It's just one single tone, and look at how much information we can get out of this, right? Our human brain is trained to memorize every shape we've seen ever since we were born. Now look at these animals, right? These are certain animals with their sub species all right they're both uh see this is this is a moose but this is a reindeer they're really close but but just a little bit of change in the silhouette we can tell what animals they are right look at look at these gazelles right one of them is uh african and the other one is probably from another uh environment but look look at look at the curve in their back and the length of their legs and how tall their uh, rear is right you could, but but yeah they're antlers right look at look at the look at the uh, look at the snow leopard and a lion right look at a wolf and a hyena look at the look at these two different elephants right one is an african elephant the other one is a mammoth and look at these two different bisons right you just add bigger fur and see that's why silhouette in shape language is extremely subtle right 
you need to notice all this stuff. So, since you were doing uh, cool characters, look. Look at look at look at Superman, right? He's really fit, and uh, Batman. And if you if you put a really skinny person next to it, you can tell one of them can easily be fast enough to outrun the other guy, right? And look at look at Hulk, Iron Man, and Wolverine. I know we know who they are, but it's so clear enough that you can just recognize them at this stage, right? It's really crazy, and even their body language is being dictated by that as well. So that's why now going back to your thumbnails up here. Um, yes, you can. Well, everybody uses it in a different way, but my advice would be before you put in all this uh, little intricate details in there, I think you should definitely focus on what this character is, right? Like you need to look, you need to like it while it's a silhouette. Uh, yes, of course, down the line, if you find something interesting, you can still change it and break it. But mm. if you're going to do a strong character, strong silhouette. If you want to do a fast character, fast silhouette, mm. right? So you need to uh, look up. Uh, James, James Pake's tutorials had a lot of good stuff from uh, Brainstorm. They, they definitely tackle this subject really well, right? So like, okay, check this out. I would go like, okay, really quick here. So if I if I make this character silhouette, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if this is a wing or some armor part up here. It doesn't matter. But look at look at the, look at the legs. See, look at the legs. But look at the top part. It 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 almost looks like completely two different characters, right? If you look at it silhouette wise. This is a schoolgirl. This is a knight. See what's going on? This is a schoolgirl. This is a knight. So it would be best if you apply the design and the musculature equally. All the way down to their legs. Oh, Burin. Yes, sorry. Uh, I have to... I gotta fix my Cintiq, so if anybody in the uh, chat... Re sees um, Twitch freaking out for a little bit. That's because I'm. I have to unplug and plug in my Cintiq and try to get this to work before my. But it'll it'll still be recording you. It'll Twitch is just gonna okay. freak out a All little right. bit and probably go black sure. for a second or two. Okay. Anyway, just continue. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's that, that's why it's really important. And after yeah, once you decide with your silhouette, I suggest. Do not go with, uh, but it's my case. Do not go with like, um, sorry, with, with these kind of lines, you know? I mean, it's it's great, but, well, it depends on how you use your lines. But if you, if you, if you do a lot of cross hatches and stuff like that, it just turns your drawing into so much noise, you know? And after you look at it, you don't understand what you were really doing. And I see a lot of guys do this. Like, uh, yeah, I know it. it's me, it's me, but you have to understand maybe you know what you're drawing, but your eyes are constantly battling, uh, looking into noise, noisy lines, right? Your, your brain is trying to differenti differentiate uh, what it is, right? So you also need to make it easier for yourself. So that's why uh, learning how to draw cleaner line and smooth curves is super important. And uh, yeah, it's good, but check this out. Like uh, I would totally simplify this if it was me because I can totally work on detailing later right on the rendering st stage I can work on it as much as I want I don't need it here you see I would just simply like simplify it with really flat shapes like I'm, I'm not even gonna bother with secondary not, not even not even faces no like just I, I can worry about it. So, so these white parts are skin tone. Yeah, if you want to put like a really important bit, you can mark it out like this. See, look look how look how easy it is to look at that, right? And everybody can see. Oh, okay, cool, right? You don't need to like, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's an old person. You know, if it's an old person, you know what you got to do, right? You just go back and look at the old people's silhouettes and apply it, and then every detail is secondary. 
Um, that's my advice on silhouette and thumbnailing because it's super important. Do not spend too much energy on details while you're doing silhouettes and thumbnails. That's not important. That's not important because you can you can always spend another 50 hours on this. See? And if it's, again, if it's recognizable at this level and also very recognizable at this level, you have done half your battle, okay? You don't need to change anything after this because these steps exist for that reason. So you can't think about everything at the same time, right? Those guys do everything at the same time. Like, let's say you just grab this and like, oh, okay, I'll like, um, yeah, I would silhouette it first and then add the secondary details with really basic silhouettes. What? It's basically silhouette within a silhouette, right? Well, I'm sorry, I'm working really rough, but, but the idea is that I would make it not noisy, just clear enough to see what, what I'm going to do. Yeah. It doesn't um, matter. It doesn't matter what's inside. What is going the most, on? The most important part is your uh, your uh, shapes and uh, silhouettes. And yeah, again, you need to have a resting area. Do not make everything super noisy. And that's it. And uh, speaking of uh, putting everything on a white background, uh, I hope you guys know this amazing artist Ryan Lang. He's uh, he works at Disney, I think. And look at look at this guy. He he's he's putting his characters right in a white environment. I know he doesn't have like a drop shadow. That's okay because um, I, I wouldn't do it like him. But look at how he did it. It's really amazing. It really stands in that white environment. The characters show that it's in a white environment based on the reflections. Look at like look at his arms and his biceps and stuff. It has white on it. Can you hear me? Did you just lose connection, Burin? Hmm. You can hear Burin? What the? Maybe my headphones turned off again. Oh, this is so annoying. So something is going on. Yeah, I can't hear Burin at all right now. I don't know if he can hear me. So some people say they can hear him and what? Oh, Boren's frozen for me. Yeah, um Let me think. We're going to we might have to um Hold on. Uh, here, I'm going to exit in here. One second. I need to put this on. Uh... Sorry, I got to uh, figure some stuff out with Burin. It looks like he went down or something. <laughs> 